Hello there, and you're very welcome along to yet another episode of the Football Pod. I've got Paddy Andrews and James O'Donoghue back with me. <coughs> Fellas, have you ever, you know, celebrated a draw in front of the stand? Or have you ever gone and taken a photo of the club photographer like Martin Odegaard did yesterday <laughs> after the game? That was a bit over the top from Odegaard. Nah, you can't be done. No, he, no. Uh, fair enough, he took the first photograph. Then they checked it, they realised that he didn't look good enough, so they went back and took another that three photographs. more genuine then. I don't think he did. He realised he was on camera. Like, on the, TV the camera was about two foot away from him. <laughs> he definitely yeah, knew. I, it was I all for sure. And Odegaard's kind of. Odegaard's a bit of class, isn't he? Typical, like. I'd scan oh, he start, he's cool. starting to do a lot of, like, fist pumping to the crowd and. No, he's, like, that's, taking photos so of the photographer. Uh, he's he's on a, a, he's on a, a dodgy line. Well, that's coming from Arteta. I don't like Arteta, lads. I mean, really? Like, no. See, he's going when a goal went in and he was down the side, like, giving it the big one. And he's, <laughs> he's, if, you put it, if you're playing against him, he is a pain in the hole, isn't he? Like, he I'd is. All the managers yeah. do not like him, like. Nah, he's, like he's too all, serious. Yeah, and he's all out of his technical area and all that crap. But no, I didn't mind the card, like. Okay, I was I not utterly hypocritical class. from Carragher? Though. That's what, yeah, and I like Carragher. I have to, I like yeah. less than the Carragher. Uh, but he was funny. How was it hypocritical to Carragher? Think of what Liverpool do. He gives it the bomb. absolute big one, like the two-two draw in front of the cop, doing it like a. No, I like don't. My, I agree. Right, but the, they can celebrate away, especially after a big win. Celebrate with the crowd, taking. Pictures of the nah, photographer geez. was just a bit cringe. I thought it was right just like here. it was like you're the right game. You're all days. Like. I was thinking you're better than that, Martin. I know. Be a bit more sentimental, <laughs> Marty. <laughs> no, Marty. Uh, no. Carragher, Carragher was full of shit there. I thought Surely he messed when he said it first, and then he doubled down. He's like, "No, yeah. I'm serious." And I was yeah, like, yeah, "Oh yeah. no, you're gonna get hammered for that." Like, he did I have a great know. tweet though, and he was he referenced um, Neil, Neil Warnock. Warnock. <laughs> if you come at Carragher on Twitter he's not shy of coming back isn't he not like, no I saw he went back he, at a few people all right? he's all action isn't he what a man uh, anyway other than that there was phenomenal GA over the weekend wasn't there yeah, serious the, sporting weekend <laughs> brilliant weekend yeah have the dogs ever the bike holiday yeah. have you ever celebrated a league win in Mayo as being significant or down in Kerry Paddy because they're in short demand at the minute for the dubs no, we had a great night in Mayo a couple of years back when the game was called off half time for fog. <laughs> you stayed out? Last night, so. Yeah, we were down staying overnight, we were playing well, it was 2012 maybe. Fog came in, game called off half time and we went on the absolute piss out to Westport. It was one of the best nights we had. So it was like totally random. So, you, know, you, you don't know what's coming if you're in there and some lads were still wearing shorts, shorts and socks from the game. Like, and ended up blowing the hinges off. It was a great gig. But uh, <coughs> any other time, I think we used to go up and back in the one day. Though. That was a bit mm. of a ball break. Like, yeah. Getting home at half two, three o'clock. We had a good record in, uh, in Castle Bar. And I said, I, I, it's the same with you guys, Jimmy. We used to play you the last couple of years under Jim. We used to go up and back in the one day. Oh my God. Driving back from Clary. Yeah, you, dre- you dread that weekend, wouldn't you? Oh, you need man. to enjoy. There's no joy in that. Come yeah. on. Like. No, but you know what it was like before, kind of early on. When Pat was the manager, Jim was the manager. We'd go down, you go early on the Saturday and you'd stay over. You wouldn't get home till the Sunday evening. So the whole weekend was gone. So I'm kind of like, would you rather this or would you rather just suck it up and get out of there? Um, at least you've all Sunday on your own. And we went with that. But geez, there were long days though, yeah. Yeah. But would it, and would you no, stop on the way up for a few points or on the way or pull in? On the way up to the game? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> on no. the way home. On the way home, no. you wouldn't stop no, anyway. We, we never did. Eating no. Killarney and home straight. I used to eat in no because they're always in Tralee because always they're always night games so we'd eat in what's that oh, hotel yeah. is it the Rose that name of yeah, the hotel the Rose hotel in there and honestly you're on the road you're out again long days though Jesus they were but that no, is we, long day, yeah. we wouldn't have stayed even like we had a decent record as well in Clary uh, early days and uh, we wouldn't have went on the piss after no but one of the best nights we did Westport the game's called off great kick <laughs> the replay match we lost by about 20 points they absolutely battered us so yeah it probably will come to a phase where a manager does a clap and brings everyone over and starts doing the waving to the crowd like it probably will go there at some stage what, like what's a major win like what, what was the best atmosphere last year like what was a massive win Monaghan beating our man Penos did they give the big one to the crowd 
probably, like, I don't know if that's really a thing in the GA though, is it really? But no. like, you might but have, that was a, you might have soaked it up. Chapter games are maybe a bit differently. But a league soak game, it up on the pitch, maybe. And it, more likely in the league game because in Crow Park, especially for that game, that was a double header. All mm. the fans are strewn all over the stadium. You have no section. Yeah. Well, you have a bit of a section, but I think I can see a team doing that in the in National League. When when your eyes are on, you know, such a big prize, like a lot of the teams are, Desi Farrell's talking about prepping for the summer, Mickey Hart's the same. Yeah. Are you able to actually enjoy the journey of the year? Like, is that something that players can do? Because that is, I suppose, what Ian Wright was saying back to Jamie Carragher, let them enjoy it. I think if you're, if, from a personal point of view, if you're going well early, it's it's easy to enjoy it then. But like as a player, I find, or I found that I was constantly thinking what I'm short or, you know, what I need to do or what I'm missing or where I'm not. Do you know, there was only a couple of years where I, I found well, I, that I was fit enough to kind of feel that I could enjoy the year from, from the off. And that's important from where you fit into the team from the very beginning. You. Yeah. You're yeah, selfish. Like players are selfish. It's, you know, like you want, you want to be going well yourself first and foremost, really, you know, because yeah. you have to look after I agree, Jimmy. You get yourself right. Knocks and niggles, or you're not playing well, or like particularly like the older players, you're on a different probably training program. You're doing quite a lot of fitness work. Uh, when the team is playing early rounds of the league and stuff, and just the, the nature of it, it's so relentlessly. Like, like say Mayo win there the other night against Dublin. Okay, there's, there's actually a break now. Full the hurling starts this weekend. A couple of younger lads will be playing Sigerson and stuff like that. But it's week on week, and even since we've stopped playing, it's even more like that with the schedule of the mm-hmm. championship. So. There's not really time, and it's not just going on, on the piss like the lights out with the grate and all that stuff, but just getting time to just take a breath and relax. And like some of the best or the most enjoyable things I would have had in my double career, but weren't necessarily nights out. It was more you go on a training camp, but it might be two weeks or two, three weeks till the next game, and you kind of relax a little bit there and just enjoy each other's company and stuff like that. But the reality, it's so particularly. The teams competing to win the All Ireland, like it is, tight pressure. Like mm. maybe too much, maybe you put too much pressure on yourself. But um, but it, it is. is there's but... times where it's if it doesn't if it doesn't go well, even a, even a talking this, even a bad training session, it weighs yeah. on you. Yeah, honestly, it does. Like yeah, so I think that's just elite sport, doesn't it? Like Jimmy, you, yeah. But you I found even after a lot highs and crushing lows, that's just the nature yeah. of it. But say even after say a team loss when he you you've all not played well or you've all not delivered like the atmosphere even in training on a on a Tuesday night is is not enjoyable. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's you're like, not laughing or joking there. You're like not no. We got, we got to get to work. Like you're not. And if you dig out a one point win there, it's the opposite. It's all laughs and jokes. Every fella, the most boring bastard, is cracking every sort of a joke after one point <laughs> yeah, win. It's laughing, laughing, like, minute, like. There's nothing. It's there's nothing enjoyable about losing, and there's nothing enjoyable about you personally not going well. I suppose that's that's the longest short of it. Because I remember one of my later games against you guys, Jimmy Down. I remember the row. You beat us by a point. It was a big row in the mm. tunnel. Yeah. It, was it nineteen or was it eighteen? <laughs> it was around was, years, that was twenty. Was that was around. it. Was it would have been nineteen? Yeah, it would have been nineteen. Nineteen, maybe, and uh, and he beat us. And like to be brutally honest, we had fuck all done. Like we we were not. It was an early enough round game in the league. None of us were in great shape. We've been we'd enjoyed the winter and stuff like that. And we knew. And then just the way that game went, the Kerry crew were giving it a big one like and and Kerry to be fair, <laughs> absolutely giving it like, large. Or giving it the large. Like you know, you're like, you want Sam? <laughs> it was like that. And there's only, and then you lose the game. And the way you lose it. Oh, we were Crowley got a fist point at the end, I think. Peter yeah, and then do you remember yeah. there was a massive there was a massive brawl in the middle of the field. Yeah. And Jim Gavin his... power walked over across the field, yeah. right? I thought this fella is gonna lay some up. <laughs> he just walked past everyone and just onto the onto the sideline, just ignored a massive brawl in the middle of the field. But, uh, but that was like for a game that like we weren't you know, if, if you said to us before that match you're gonna lose this game, we'd have been like, Okay, that's grand, we can kind of understand, but the way it happened, like I remember I had a mark we're point down right at the end and I hit the post with it. So then I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, raging for like a month after that. Like, every training session was taking the kick, 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 kick. And uh, none of us really played well in the game. And like for two, three weeks, that was like, the atmosphere was like, right, we have to get to work. It was a big wake-up call. It was brilliant mm-hmm. for us in the grand scheme of things. But it was like, that's just an example of a league game. That 
we weren't really at it. And it was like the atmosphere had an edge for weeks after that. Mm. So mm. did you enjoy that? <laughs> like, oh, it's hard to look back. I don't know if we did, but we just had to do it. Like, yeah, you see, like that's that why end. sometimes you're better off coming out on the wrong side of some of those results. If you're strong enough mentally, mm. it can really be a turning point for your season. Whereas if you're, if you come out with a one point win and you think you're great, or you think, Do you know what, we're not doing too bad now, it might just give you kind of a false sense of security as a group. Do you know? You learn, you learn well, way more from defeat. I, I thought, like, that's just, that's given. You do. You, but you, just you the, the atmosphere in the camp is, yeah. is so much better after winning, but sometimes. It, it, it kind of masks over maybe this early in the year anyway. But, but we, we needed we needed a hard atmosphere for a couple of weeks. That we yeah. needed to focus again. That was a big part for us, and that's like it was. It's almost for watching the covers. You know, on RTD the other night, it was Keegan and Whelan, and it was kind of like a quip. Like you don't want to win the league, like and Mayo kind of obviously last year is the example where they, they were brilliant in the spring, and then it just had a bit of a disaster in the championship, but. You know, there's a balance there. You want a positive atmosphere. You do want players to try and enjoy it as much as you can, but you do need to have a bit of an edge as well. The old Michael Jordan, like I took that personally. Yeah, and it does have a place in teams and sport, most certainly. Well, that's something we're definitely seeing in the first two rounds of the league. We're seeing a lot of teams maybe get over the line without playing too well. I thought one of the quotes of the weekend actually, Paddy went to one of your former teammates, Jer Brennan. Um, oh yeah, yeah, great win for so, he, Jerry's he always says, crack for a quote, though, I have to say. Yeah, he says, against a more clinical team, Cork would rule a number of chances they missed. I thought we won playing poorly, which is great too. There's an awful lot of work, a lot to work on, so I wouldn't be overly pleased. I wouldn't be licking myself, or the lads wouldn't be too much. What a way to put it. <laughs> have you Georgie there beside you? The little, yeah, the little cat is there beside me. He is very, very fond of licking himself, but... Uh, <laughs> No, uh, that was a great win for Jack. Yeah. Obviously, because they they would have been disappointed. They nearly pulled up a brilliant win, obviously, up on Armagh, which is in Division 2, probably the toughest game there t- t- to play Armagh away. I know Tony Gallup started well as well, but we're allowed to get a win at home against Cork. And Cork, oh, you know, did, did you tip them in the end, Jimmy? No, no a, I did. No, you, I, you, I you said did. last year they'd have a good year. You I gave said, a good year. Ceiling yeah. this year. They have ceiling. They're not going to do anything this year, 100%. But, they're, uh, they're, geez, that's too bad as us now, not Yeah, well, but, but for Jair and Loud, like after it was a tough gig going in after Mickey Hart, and I, I know they, they did a piece last week where they kind of said, "Look, Mickey Hart is gone. Don't worry about that. We, we kind of move on." Hmm. But um, but that's a good win. Two, so two more importantly, two really good performances. Obviously, for the first couple of weeks, and now all the teams get a chance to kind of take a breath, Re-group. reset. They have two weeks till till the next round of the games, and then like I say, it's relentless there through the whole. Basically, the end of February all the way through March, it is, it is flat to the match. So, you're getting a little bit of a sense of what teams are trying to do and what teams are going to have a, are up against it you can, and what teams are going to have a good season. So, we kind of, it's been very interesting over the first couple of weekends. Yeah, it's, it's worth remembering who Jared Brennan has alongside him as he's, you know, establishing, establishing himself as an county coach. He's got Niall Moyna, who would have been involved yeah. with DCU and the Dubs back in the day, and Monaghan native. They got James McCartan, we James from down. Uh, David White is a coach as well. He's also got James Downey and Paulo Flynn. He had a really strong back routine that that Jerry oh, put Downey, together. Yeah, no Jimmy Downey. Well, uh, yeah. Moyna obviously was with us with DCU, top class kind of uh, strength and conditioning and all that side of things as well. So a good little team about him. Yeah, definitely. has he yeah. sourced all those himself? Do you reckon? Like, is he gone and put together his whole team there, or is there was there a few I left over? Thought he knew James McCart. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, it just seems like known, a random enough group. You would have known Jimmy Downey, who was an ex-rugby player with Northampton and Munster. He would have known him from around Dublin, definitely. He was out in Griffith Avenue. Uh, and he would have known mine, obviously, with Dublin and DCU. Uh, but I thought uh, that James McCartan would, because James McCartan could easily be a head coach himself. It has been mm. very successful. Obviously, with Queens, he uh, had a bit, of, <laughs> a bit of disaster, much to our amusement. but went down at that time. Probably we were being a bit harsh with that. But um, I didn't. I didn't know how Jerry would have met him. But like I say, it's there's a lot of people who know what they're at in, in that management team. Mm, so hundred percent, you'd see that in the first couple of weeks. Yeah, and it's look. That's the second time in a row in the league that Loud have beaten Cork in RD. That's two years in a row. So they have the hexam there. Cork missed the clatter goal chances. John Cleary said they performed better than they did against Donegal, and they'll be hoping to bounce back. They're going to have three games in a row now, and we're back next week. So Cork. Rock bottom of Division 2. That is definitely one of the headlines of the weekend. 
The dubs, as you mentioned, are rock bottom of Division 1. I don't want to linger on Dublin Mayo too much, lads, but just a few things. Kevin McStay afterwards uh, was laughing. He said he would have taken a point, but he was delighted <laughs> to take the two. Uh, Desi Farrell said, a lot of the teams, from what we understand, have been back a long time. We want to be as competitive as we can in the league, but we are always looking towards the summer and what that brings us. We're not going to put a gun to our head in terms of Division 1 status being crucial or paramount to us. James, the dubs seem to be just one of these teams that don't have to overly worry about, you know, mm. being a, on the wrong side of a result. They play quite well, actually, at times in both of their games against Dublin and Mayo. They've obviously got a, maybe seven or eight established players and seven new players coming in as well. Would you be worried about the dubs? No. I, I think the dubs are, are fine. They'll be, they'll be right in the mix. Top three again, guaranteed, come the, come the summer. They'll be fine. Like, if you look through their team, they're back I mean four of their back seven five of their back seven are arguably not first pick and they're still they're still performing admirably there like there was a lot of ball that went in to the male full back line in the, or to the male full forward line the first half they came back out I thought the Dublin full back line were tight they were up there they were getting fist in so I think that if they can get maybe and I've always said it about Dublin they need to keep producing a couple of defenders just to keep keep that um that full back line solid because Fitzsimons is he's obviously getting a bit older. They need probably to get one or two in there. And then like they just keep churning out performances. They don't need to be winning these games, I don't think. Yeah. They're fine. Like they're they're not going to be under pressure. But the one thing that I noticed or that was that was very impressive, I thought, was it was actually by Mayo. Say with the when Conor Cadden had the shot and it was given for a wide. Yeah. And it was the game was going to be a draw probably but Mayo had a chance and they risked it Reap went long from the kick out right if they lose that they probably lose the game so they they in fairness to Reap he said I'm going long here and if we win it there's a good chance we could win the game and they did win it they probably got a soft free but they worked it brilliantly from there but I just thought that was excellent by Mayo to say do you know what we're at home let's launch this long win it and win the game yeah so were you what, what were you impressed by Mayo in the end because at uh, 12 minutes to 8 in our WhatsApp group you weren't overly impressed with them <laughs> no I thought that yeah I thought they were up to nothing it was, was the gargle talking there as you were? <laughs> <laughs> it was 6-2 it, it was 6-2 after the they first were, quarter they were struggling bad do you want to read out what you said no, no. okay I'll leave it that's there. in the members pod Thursday. we'll keep it in the group we'll keep it in the members pod okay that's great <laughs> the group chats are very the secret okay. group. Sac- I don't, I don't want to breach Sac- any confidence. Like I don't want to breach any confidence. Room, you but, can't, can't <laughs> Paddy, can I just mention, right, so uh, Kevin McLaughlin is retired. He wasn't a starter for Mayo anyway. They're clearly lacking a left-footed free-taker. Aidan O'Shea yeah. had been taking some. Um, I heard Dean Rock talking about the process that he went through and knowing he would know when a player was going to miss a free. And it yeah. felt like O'Shea had won that he maybe just rushed a yeah. little bit and yeah. went wide. Later on, Ryan who wins that free off Keane Murphy. Wrong side I thought it was a free. I thought, I thought it was a free. Yeah, I thought it was I a know, push. You said it was harsh. I thought it was... I, th- I thought yeah, Murphy had, I thought Keane Murphy had an excellent game. Obviously, he, he's maybe relatively inexperienced at that level, but um, I thought the structure of Dublin defence, if you remember, two weeks ago against Monaghan, was really, really poor. He struggled with runners from deep. Um, Monaghan could have scored five goals. I think the only... Mayo's goal wasn't even a goal chance. So, so I thought Dublin's yeah. performance was... I actually thought it was their best league performance in a number of years. I'd, I'd be really? very, yeah, I'd be very, very happy with Dublin's performance the other day. I thought the first and third quarters they were excellent. The younger yeah. players on it, I think Theo Clancy. I know we we yes. kind of touched on him with, with Kilmacook Croaks. That looks good. Yeah. I, Do you think he I, has the materials? Yeah, I, I think he has the potential to play with Dublin in the championship for the next ten years. Wow. Um, I do. Uh, and what is that? Is that the athleticism? Is that the head or what? Uh, athleticism, his mentality, his aggression. And I was on Aidan O'Shea. And look, he's only a young, young guy, very young guy. And he will make mistakes. And playing in Castlebar in those conditions um, might suit generally defender. There'd be a bit, I know Dublin playing Ross, he's next to play Kerry and Crow Parks so with very different challenges. But I think what I've seen of him is not just the other night. I thought he was good the other night, but, but with Kilmico Croaks and things like that, I think he. He could be a definitely addition over the next couple of years because obviously Fitzy's a little bit older. Um, but Davy Byrne has gone, who who would have been, you know, the last decade has been kind of the next man in in yeah. that Dublin defence. So I agree with Jimmy; they, they need to find defenders. I thought Greg McEnany was very good after struggling with with O'Hanlon the week before. So for Dublin, those younger players, and this is what Desi's kind of getting at, to supplement 
And my head guys, I, I think he'd be really happy. I thought defensively they were good. And up front, I thought they were a bit better than, than they have been. Khan probably had his best game. Still not, not what we know Khan can do, but I think he was far more of an influence there as well. Um, so I think they'll be happy with it. But, but on the free, sorry, I'm going to totally off the edge there. Okay, I thought yeah. it was a free. Kim Murphy, I think a really good game. That kind of plus one, he cut out a lot of those balls where Mayer were going direct. Um, but I, I, the play was happening, and I was like, don't do this. Show us how experienced you are, or the experience you've gained of being in the, in the squad for the last couple of years. A really good game. Ryan O'Donoghue, we've all been in that situation, boys. Just he wants that on. fall so bad. Ah, he's <laughs> like, please, please push me. Just the, just, I'm waiting for this. He's looking over, yeah. and it's like, don't do it. Don't, even if he gets this, the conditions, it's an injury time. He's not going to get around you, and he and he just gives the rest an excuse. So, so I thought it wasn't free, uh, but I thought Ryan O'Donoghue did brilliant with the because Mayo, like you said, just, they don't have the left footer. Even if they had a left footer free, that's a very difficult. He was on the sideline. Yeah. So O'Donoghue to, again to mirror what Jimmy's point on, on earlier in the score. It was a risk. You know, you're, you're taking a thirty yard cross field kick pass. You know that is that could go wrong. And but has he, gone wrong. he had to hit it into his mouth because yeah, he couldn't as soon as the Dubs whatever. knew what was happening, they sprinted out to Boland. But because the pass was so good, all the bowling had to do was take one step and just swing it. Was, it was a great score to win it. Yeah, it for, was. For, for Mayo. But, but over the course of the game, I know for 60 minutes, I, th- I think Dublin were a, a far better team for McStay. Obviously, I think he's going to tongue the cheek after the game. He, he probably got away with a win, but it's still a good win for him. Puts them really in, in, yeah. in a good position. Yeah, no, abs- absolutely. And, and I like think we so. were just talking. Yeah. It's a win o- over Dublin. And you like know, particularly after the how last season finished in the championship for them, you see the just, the supporters and stuff like that. Maybe that's the you know, Jamie Carragher bit off at the top. Ah no, but, I, I I actually I actually think I actually love that about Mayo and even just in general. Even like in Clare at the weekend, you know there was only seven thousand. I think there was fourteen thousand at the Mayo game, but like everyone was on the pitch after the Clare game. But I think that's a brilliant thing and let the young kids go that's out. That's a great and, part of the yeah. And, and did you see Clifford with the Monaghan so. fans in in like there was a like a, a stampede for Clifford outside the stadium. You know, I I think that's back in the stand, the closest. Yeah, I'd be encourage, I'd be encouraging that that little bit of celebration or just enjoy it. Like life is tough enough in January and February as it is. Oh, I, I agree for the supporters. Then. Yeah. And, and to be fair, I don't think that the Mayo players. I, I know Paddy Durk and Stephen Cole were interviewing after there. They know that they're experienced guys as well. Like, yeah. but, um, but for Dublin, yeah, okay, they're zero from two. The like Rossi's next, so they're under the pump. Maybe in terms of they need to get a couple of results. To, st- to stay in Division 1 but I think they're capable of doing that but I think performance wise um, I think there was massive massive improvement from even just a, a week before about the players the younger players and also the structure of the, of the defence um, so I, I don't think there, Izzy Farrell will be overly concerned do you know what's one score that keeps happening constantly is Go the on. shot dropping short in the up in the net like it yeah. is it, a game can be going one direction and suddenly a shot drop short it's completely changed through no design no science no training no anything it's so it's always part dangerous of the game though Jimmy isn't it like, that's it is always, but always part of the game it it needs, Mayo, it's Mayo like it needs more work Mayo and Dublin Mayo yeah. and Dublin have got unbelievable joy off it offensively Kerry got a goal this weekend off it with Dermot yeah. O'Connor but like Connor Glass obviously well, Connor Glass is, is unique when it goes straight in yeah <laughs> well yeah yeah that's true, actually. I mean, that's true. I count glass, that. I'd be claiming that one. Do you know, do you know what I, mean? I, I, I knew that. straight away he fluked it. He actually came out and said he fluked it then, but, didn't he? But it showed yeah, how bad the wind was. Like, like he, he tries to bury that, and he's in the D. Like, you know, that was tough, tough conditions. But I, uh, no, but th- those goals always happen, Jimmy. Always. Even being your bonnet about, what, 13? No, the, but they're, that's what I mean. They're so, they're, they're, they're so common. It's mad. That like you can so train so hard to do a certain way. What's the I think solution, you need to you to work defensively. Approach. Yeah, work defensively more on him because if that was to cost you, hmm. you know, it's, I think it's you need horrible. your goalkeeper to be a killer in that situation. Yeah, but it happens like that. It happens like, so quickly. Right, but at the end, what El Noel Morgan does it comes out and it's like you're all getting it, mm. um, and I got yeah. it. But um, but I think the goalkeeper needs to to take control of it. <laughs> And that was then, a bit more to the sideline, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that was a, more of a, a unique angle that wasn't a drop short. But um, <laughs> but I think you're relying on your goalkeeper to come and then your full back line to be, like the, for the Mayo goal, uh, I don't think they see Cohen there at all. Yeah, and he comes no, in yeah. from the side. It's brilliant from him. You know, he's kind of, but 
you need your defenders to box out the old basketball term where you're keeping your goalkeeper free and he's the only one that should be going up. And, and that's another thing for, for Dublin. Look at the players as well. Like Theo Clancy's there, Dave Lohanlin's in goals. So they're really experienced players. You learn from that. that that's what happens mm. with younger yeah. players. But I definitely, if I'm in that situation, you want your goalkeeper being the guy. He's the one going up and everyone else on the ground, protect them. Yeah. Do, it's, yeah. that, it's that new rule with the... Well, not new rule, no, but you can be in the square... Waiting for it. So yeah. like it is you once the ball is kicked, you can then move into the square and, and wait for it in there. Yeah. Did you, yeah. you tell me you were giving it the big one on Twitter there over the weekend? Was there something Yeah, there was a controversy over the Clare uh in the Clare West Mead game. So yeah. there was a massive you win had, in that you game. had the stills out and everything. I had the stills out, yeah. Oh, Claire, oh, right. I thought it might be on the Sunday game, but it wasn't <laughs> on the Sunday game. Now the problem with the still is there was oh, a player go. in the middle. Now, I don't think he's in the square and he's not involved in the play, but some what people game are saying is this, this is Claire Westmead. Claire got a last minute goal to put them oh, three up. Yeah. This allowed, and Ronan O'Toole goes down and swings over the winner for Westmead. So it could, could be a big West result. They need to get out of that division. Yeah. They need to get out of there. Get up to big, Division 2. Big result for Westmead. And, um, but like the Cormac Murray comes in at the back post. It's a, it's a great move down along the end line, squared. Murray makes a run from deep, nowhere near the square uh, when the ball is squared to him. Um, but there is a player seemingly on top of the square. Now, I don't think it is that. I don't think that's what the call is, but I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But, Name uh, a shame. Who's the ref? And give Jimmy's the umpire's names. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even check. I didn't even check that up, lads. The umpire does that. not want to make a decision there. Like, no, but, uh, Craig like, Morley actually was in the square for his. Do you see his chance where he pammed it wide? Oh, that was yeah. a square ball as well. He was waiting. Was he getting ball. big grief over that, James? I hope so. <laughs> Probably. No, I'd say get a bit of banter. Like, yeah, yeah, they'd have a bit of banter about that. In well. it's a it's a defender as well. You're always you get a little bit more leeway. It was similar enough to Pascal's with the week before against Monaghan, where he's not with his palm to cross. You think it's a goal. Just wait for the net to rustle. So. Yeah. Yeah, Morley's was probably a little bit worse, but look, they, they won the game and he was having a little bit of a chortle on the way back out. Himself. Yeah, he did. He knew it wasn't the same. He'll get a bit of stick, all right? Yeah, the right, uh, so. the division <laughs> three results just before we come back because I want to go to Derry briefly. But the division three results, Oren Murdoch scored two three, two beautiful penalties, both in their top corner for down. They hammered Limerick three sixteen to nine points. Uh, down are looking good for promotion straight out. Westmead also on. Uh, in a good place, they bet clear as you mentioned with that um that late disallowed goal controversial. Not sure if VAR or Timo would have made the difference there, lads, but we might get leave that one. Uh, Antrim have continued their strong start, a two five to one seven win against Offaly. A couple of low scoring games here, but I think the the wind was Conditions wrecking havoc. Yeah, yeah, weren't great. Bad. But um yeah, Antrim on four points as well in Division Three and uh, Offaly uh, winless so far and Sligo. A late winner from Sean Carbine got them past Ushin McCombs Wicklow. So Wicklow have been unlucky. Um, they haven't picked Cross up Cross McLean Derby, McIntyre and Ushin McCombs. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so yeah. it's a down Antrim Westmead all on four points. Limerick, Wicklow, and Offaly all on zero points in Division Three. In Division Four, uh, Leitrim were made to work for it, but they got past London, so they're still top of the table. They bet London by five. Thank you, Darryl Great Rooney, tip. kicking five <laughs> points. Uh, tip overturning Longford. Paddy, I think you were just yeah. saying that. That was a big win. And the curse of the O'Brien Cup champions continues. Yeah. They've lost their first two again, Longford. <laughs> so Jimmy, you went big on them. You went big yeah. on Longford. Yeah. They've over-celebrated that O'Brien Cup. But Cork they won the McGrath Cup on penalties Martin and they've had a disaster there. as well. Yeah. They over-celebrated. It was actually a thing. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so um, that was uh, those two results in Division 4. Then we had Carlo Hammer and Waterford. So Waterford at rock bottom. Carlo uh, had a good start. And then the biggest kind of thing from Leash Wexford was was off the pitch, and the Justin, the Justin McNulty <laughs> controversy with the SDLP. Sport and politics don't mix. Oh, they, they, they mix. They mix on this pod, but I'm not sure where we go with this. Obviously, it's been an historic couple of days in the north um, with Michelle yeah. O'Neill taking charge, but uh, it was obviously called at short notice, and McNulty was at the first sitting of the Northern Ireland Assembly on Saturday. Stuck out the back, like. But he snuck out the back. <laughs> Just I'll to shoot off here, lads. I'll be back. Yeah. I'll, I'll so, catch up on Zoom. Record this meet. <laughs> he's uh, just he's a great person. He was, he was my club coach a couple of years. Oh, Bridget's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Justy back, just in case. Yeah. So, hmm. um, yeah. Look, there's there's people putting it to him that he's going to have to make a decision between, you know, being a sitting politician and uh, 
nah. and Stormont and the thing, but I'm not sure that's going to have to happen. We'll see. Over. We'll see what Justy's, happens. Hopefully, Justy's he's, all right. Justy's he's all right. had a great start though with Leash, and Killian yes. Roach, the Clare goalkeeper who's transferred up to Leash, has kicked another five points. Manuel so Neuer, ten points, ten points in two games. Yeah, so he's fine. Didn't score that whole league career. Yeah, Division 3 and 4. So, Leeds from Carlo Leach, all on four points. London, Longford, Waterford, each with, three, with two to beat so far. So, um, some of the other results then in the other games then in Division 1. We have We're trying to bury Meath here in Division 2. Mm. You know, we might Let's try to get around that. Let's Meath. I think no, we should yeah, do that. Because you're always big for me here. Says, and members pod. <laughs> <laughs> you just say that, anyone. If any of you don't want to talk about it, we mentioned it on Thursday. Never what mentioned that on Thursday. If Maid had got a result up at Arba, you would have been, it would have been the lead. It would have been <sighs> top of the show. You're a disgrace. Then. What, what I'll say about Mead is they, they just aren't functioning, I was going to say in attack, but really anywhere yet at the minute. Uh, but it's, I think it's Tough mostly game. in attack. Arba, yeah. That's, that's a bad, a bad yeah. defeat. Yeah, that good. team holder. Quite too heavy. Firma. It's very early in the year. That's very, very early in the year. Where did and they go on the team all day, actually, after Telta? Yeah, sorry. I didn't hear that. I just. can't remember. I did see them somewhere, and Rorke was out with them all. I can't remember exactly where it was, though. I think it could have been Spain or Abay or something for five days. Or oh, you can't remember. Okay. Can't remember. Be let them. You've got to but, go further. Okay. Yeah. If you want to start with Division <laughs> that's 2. That's just a long that's weekend to the boys. Jesus, weather is Proper team all day. Yeah, Bristol for three days. Like. West Meader and Cancun. <laughs> For two weeks, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. If Mead went to Marbella, that's a shambles. You're better than that. Should be a revolt. Yeah. Anyways, that's that's what happened. There we Arma, got the crooks. Two sixteen, Mead ten points. A bit of a whooping. Arma had nine different scores. And Paddy, I can't remember if you mentioned them in one of your players to watch, but in our WhatsApp group, you certainly gave Keen McConville a plug. He scored one one. Seems to be getting his chance this year after being um, tipped to break through the last couple of years. He's a shooter. So. Yeah, impressive from Kim Campbell. Mead, as I said, not really functioning in attack. Young Owen Frayne has kicked nine points in the two games, but they're not getting enough joy from others. They've had 10 players who played Sigerson midweek and also played in both of those games. So Mead are one of the counties that are caught with that. But there's a few counties in that boat as well. Um, I'd say once the Sigerson Cup is over, Colin O'Rourke will be a happy man. For Mana, flying lads. Kieran Donnelly has got this side mowed really well. I'm not sure if you watched it on Saturday evening. I had a good eye on this game. Ryan Bogue, yeah. their goalkeeper, saved the late Kevin Feely penalty, but I don't think there would have been enough time for an equaliser. Um, for Mano win by four. Sean Cassidy in great form, one of the top scorers from play in the league so far. Caldero are now in serious trouble. Yeah. Uh, Stats and Solos, a GA account uh, on Twitter, have the percentages worked out for who is likely to go up or stay up or stay down, get relegated. Guys, and yeah. Caldero's percentages are staying up at the moment. Are very, very low. I'm not sure what the yes. metrics are in that, but we, we genuinely will do that Thursday. As we mentioned, Loud 2 9, Cork 13 points, and Cavan fell just short against Donegal. Um, we might come back to this game in a few minutes. Donegal winning by a point 13 to 12. They continue their good run. So, I think the results the, the, we've already mentioned in that in, in Division 2, though, like Cavan and Fermanagh are better than what like the stats will give them. Like, oh, say, yeah. if you're saying the Kildare are going to yeah. go down because they play the two promoted teams. But they're probably going to end up being two of the most challenging games in the division. You still think yeah. Kildare have enough quality. Like as, 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 as in trouble as they are, they have, it's too much quality. Yeah, I'm surprised with Cavan going well doesn't, doesn't surprise me. I, I thought they'd have a decent run in Division 2. For Mana, does, I have to say. I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, yeah. And a big win for them and their full value against Kildare as well. So, um, How many points to stay up? Is it? Would you you need six or would you need, you need seven? Five or six. It was six, five last year. Five. Five. Meet at five last year. A draw with Limerick late on is what saved their bacon. Uh, if if you end. look at Kildare, and you know people are going to take the bacon out of Kildare. Um, the the tougher games on paper in Division Two are still ahead of them. I know. You know that's like in their current form. Do you fancy Kildare getting something out of our bar? Don't you go? You know that's you know Kildare. They've still got load meat in Cork, then though. True. Yeah, but we like said it'd be the most competitive division, and it's mm. it is showing that. So there's there's work to be done, most certainly. Yeah, um, and Ocean Gallon made a return for Donegal to begin. Dave McBurdy and Gallon shot Patton as well. I'm not sure if you saw one of Patton's kickouts, but I don't know what the wind was the like. Lasers! Oh my god, it was like eighty yards. Uh, in Division One, we've already gone through Mayo one twelve, Dublin fourteen. We have. Briefly, if we actually haven't touched on Monaghan 112, Kerry 315. Um, we'll come back to that in a second. Roscommon drew nine points a piece with, with Galway. Roscommon had the Bridget's boys back. 
go away missing Kelly, Comer, Walsh. But I don't know, like David Burke was making the point afterwards that regardless of when you play, you're going to be missing players. So he's happy with how his go away side are getting on. He's happy with who he has. Um, David Burke. Yeah. He's the Roscommon manager. It's yeah, that's what you're saying about Roscommon and go away. They're both missing players. It, oh, it evens okay. itself out. As, uh, as no, 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 you said that I Bork was happy with how his Galway side were going. Yeah, oh, did I, I say that? Was, yeah, yeah, sorry, Tom, we're here. Don't to edit this out. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for catching me there, lads. Fair play Leave to you. That in. Um, that in. I want to come to this though. Derry won 12, Tyrone 9. Obviously, uh, all the attention was on Mickey Hart. There was a great photo, I'm not sure if you saw it, of his, I was on BBC Sport, of his hat blown away, his Derry hat getting blown off his head. But, anyways, <laughs> Derry won 12, Tyrone 9 points. Paddy, I want to get your take on this because you had a 9 in it. Tyrone had a couple of goal chances in the first half and they were they were in the mix, but it really kind of fell apart in that second half. Yeah, look, look, conditions were really, really difficult. Obviously, um, shooting at the dresser bed there was a massive breeze going in there, but we just seen... I thought Tyrone were actually quite good in the first half. They had those couple of chances. They were, they were keeping in touch against really, really difficult conditions and they thought, okay, this is... You expect that some... Like, the reaction... Over the winter, with Mickey Hart going to throw is one of outrage. To Derry. Like, jeez. Yeah, they're going to Derry. Sorry. And it's like, when this game is on, the Tyrone lads are going to be flat to the mat. And I got the sense in the first half, okay, it was really good. Um, Derry were obviously one and a half time, but you thought they're going to have to deal with serious pressure in the second half. And I was really, really disappointed with Tyrone in that second half. Um, I tipped them to struggle in Division 1 this year, even with, you know, as we talked about Derek Hanneman last week. Um, I thought the shot selection, you, you know, we've all been there, lads. It was a big win behind you. going, if I get a, a yard here, I'm pulling the trigger. But I thought their, their shot selection in the second half was really, really poor. But the biggest thing that annoyed me about them, if you look at the last 10 minutes of that game, they're... And particularly one of the last kickouts, they're trailing, I think it was 12 7 at the time. And Morgan gets a ball about maybe 50 yards out from goal and pulls the trigger outside of the right foot. Really good strike. And you're thinking, okay, I know he's the goalkeeper, but you might back up the score. It doesn't go over. But he's pushed up uh, on the kickout. And Oralidge gets two short kickouts off in the final 10 minutes. And this is with Morgan pushed up. So, so mm. you think, all right, it's a really aggressive press. You're losing the game. You need to get the ball back. You have to, even when that you're back, I am talking like full core press and the rest mm -hmm. in that situation. And Tyrone, or at least just chips it off. The, the body's up there, but there's no intensity. There's no intent in getting the ball back. All this talk for two or three months about, oh, Mickey Hart this, Mickey Hart that, and Tyrone, this, you know, the teams we played against, Jimmy, Tyrone were fucking horrible to play against. They were, their Tyrone this was brilliant for them but they made it really difficult I don't think they have that I said it last year I thought they'd gone soft in a way and I just thought the final 10 minutes if they watch that back letting Shaw kickouts get chipped off there he keep the ball for the next 5 minutes Connor Glass's goal actually comes out of it and you're just thinking I thought this I thought you were hurt about this I thought this was like this was the big game the big derby and uh, the edge is going to be back in your play and I just didn't see it at all I thought those 10 minutes if they look back Brian really Dewar and Fergal Logan, or just the players themselves. Your body's up there, but you're not. You're not hunting. There, I didn't see any intent in that, and that was the surprising thing for me. Yeah. And you, you look around and go, okay, they've lost a couple of older players, um, and they're particularly on the pitch at the end of the forward line. But Curry had gone off. They had a couple of younger guys, but you could maybe excuse younger players. They're not. They're not going to be barking and shouting and pulling guys down and things like that. But that's what's needed in that situation. Yeah. That intensity. You're losing the game. You've got to get the ball back. Just... It, it is it is a fairly significant split. I think it's like 6-9 between their established players and some of the younger players that are coming in. Now, I'm including maybe Rory Canavan and the younger players yeah, there. But, but, like... but Tommy, and I get that. I get younger players. We're just talking about a Dublin situation. Younger players might make mistakes. They've got to learn. That's the, the nature of it. But in terms of intensity and yeah, like nastiness, I we're losing this game. We're going to do whatever we have to to give ourselves a chance to win it. Pull guys down, push up on the kickouts, make it an absolute nightmare. Don't let two short kickouts off and let the opposition keep the ball for five, six minutes at a time. Yeah. Like it was easy for Derry. That's the biggest um, 
challenge to that Tyrrell team that, that it was actually easy for Derry in the last 10 minutes. And all, all I'd heard for the last three months was Tyrone are going up for Derry and how could Mickey Hart do this? I didn't see that in their play at all in that second half. And I think that's the massive disappointment. It's been, and it's an accusation I'd have against them for the last couple of seasons. Do you remember the edge and the nastiness which made Tyrone all their best teams, their four all Ireland with the teams, the brilliant players, but they were, I tell you what, you didn't like playing against them. And I, I do not think that's the case with this Tyrone team. I, I'd agree to an extent. I think they are so short in terms of experience, though, that fellas are trying to find their feet at the moment. I, and I've been critical of Tyrone as well. I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to be a great year for them. I think they have too much, no. um, they have too much work to do in getting fellas through. But even last year, do you remember Matty Donnelly came back from injury and they back he, Yeah, he seemed to be. Yeah, helps he did the interview after where it was they were literally <laughs> addressing this. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Exactly. Great to see you. Delighted for you. But it didn't follow on. Well, it takes those characters to to have that. Like they're they're down those yeah. bodies again this year, and they're thinking like we're back in the same spot. And I just don't think they have that kind of that leadership from the middle middle group maybe just yet. It'll it'll come. It, it's bound to come because it's Tyrone. But I don't I don't think they have it yet. And it's kind of it's their it's their thing. You know, they're a highly motivated, highly aggressive, highly yeah. nasty side when they're at their best. And if you're missing that, and they, they, they are don't have enough. They don't oh, have enough totally in the rest of it, do you know. No. And they, then you're just going to be completely relying on, on Canavan, the two of them probably, which is which is unfair. Yeah, Sean O'Donnell impressed me in the second half. Uh, a cousin actually of the Canavans, he kicked a couple of nice points. But for Derry, lads, and that was like in terms of the inexperience of Tyrone, I suppose, and some of their players. Like Derry are probably one of the most physical and punishing teams out there right now, aren't they? Mm. They're a really smart team as well. Like. Yeah. On, the, on the flip side, they keep the ball for the guts of the last 10 minutes. Manager, I know Conor Glass gets the goal, probably a fortuitous goal in the end, but they, they control that game. And I was, I was interested to see that second half with the conditions go. Are Toronto going to come an onslaught here and Derry just control that game? Control the game. Uh, McGuigan probably didn't have his best game. You know, because this is our talk when you start seeing him miss freeze as well. Like, but we we said it the week before with their winner Tralee, they're they're very focused. On, there, there's no ambiguity about what their intentions are or what they're trying to do on, on the pitch. Dave Mickey Hart is trying to build on what was built over the last couple of years, and it's been a very good start for them with the McKenna Cup and two high profile wins. Obviously, uh, to, to go to Kerry and then to beat Tyrone, but a couple of younger players. They've got Ed Baker in the full back line and then the man of the match yesterday as well. That is, you know, if you're there now for this two-week break, you are very, very happy on the first six weeks of this 2024. No, definitely. Yeah. Like, there you're uh, in a position, Tom, where, like, they're obviously in, physic in physically very good shape. So yeah. you'd be thinking now that Mickey Hart would be working on those little tactical things that he brings, those little changes to maybe how they attack or... How, even how they defend. Now, they're, they're defending with a lot of bodies back at the moment. But I wonder, as the year goes on, will they will they lose some of those bodies in defence and just kind of trust the defence a bit more? But even yeah. in attack, they look better. They just well, look, they the look slicker and that's, sharper. Do you Carl want Burf, to... He's the type of player, that, oh, like, he's, he's got yeah. penetration. Like, he's, he's brave. He, you know, we're looking... Like, McGuigan's obviously top class, but Ethan Doherty has been... I know he's a young player there, but you're trying to nearly put some sort of scoring burden on him, whereas his game, he gets a brilliant score in the first half, nearly epitomises his game. He's, he's a brilliant transition player. And it, you know, Derry, were kind of, Derry needed him to fill two stools, you know, be a brilliant transition player, but we need to score three or four points from late to something with McGregor. Whereas Cork McMurphy seems to be, and he, he's only a younger guy again, he's going to get better. He'll learn from that, but as an inexperienced at this level team. Do, do you know what I mean? So if you're looking for him to come in and do that, but his style of play will cause defences trouble and it allows Doherty to play his more natural game. So, so that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Mickey Hart, what can I add to what's a really, really good team, the best team in Ulster the last couple of years, but they've been short on the All-Ireland stage. I need two or three things. Might be a tactical thing. Are they going to get much fitter? I agree, Jimmy. They're one of the fittest teams there are already. Nah. So it's, can we get one or two nuggets, additional players who give us that little bit more depth? And you... you in the full back line, but they're not, they're not short like Baker and then Murphy as a, a scoring threat, really direct player up front. That's 
that's what I mean. That's like after six weeks of the season, they're thinking they are their stock is going in the right direction, definitely. Yeah, I think James Cormac Murphy maybe one of our footballers of the weekend is he? One hundred percent, definitely. So so like he actually, if you talk about leadership in Tyrone, he stood up and showed unbelievable leadership. And every time he got it, he went for the juggler, went for the posts, taking men on, creating goal chances. Like even for the a handful to mark he's somebody. such a handful yeah the, like the, the week before for, for Manor. yeah taking men on is so important because teams don't train for that either at the moment all their training is getting bodies back you'd be you'd be Shame. surprised how many so fellas you can expose back there there's there's been times I've seen games even the doubles last day Conor Callaghan was marking inside forwards for Mayo for, for spells of games because people are just getting bodies back and then you just pick someone up like if you probe and probe and probe and get it to a fella's gonna take a man on, it's so dangerous. Yeah. The only thing I would I would add to Derry, and it can be worked on over the next couple of weeks easily, is sometimes when they're attacking, they go all the way into the goals. Do you know like they're they're doing nice little intricate hand passing moves, they're on the six yard box and they come back out. Like if they can pull the trigger, maybe from 25, 30 yards, just have someone in the have someone in the pockets there who's confident at that. I, they'll I pick up so many scores. But was condition, surely conditions were playing a bit in that yesterday? Definitely like, second half. Gets in a couple them, yeah. of times, and you're thinking because I'm the same. You're looking at going, how were you not shooting there? How were mm. you not taking a shot there? And true, true. Uh, but sure, I mean, even going back to last can, year and the year before, Paddy. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, the, yeah. They're getting in like backdoor cuts, and they're around on the end lines and stuff. And they could just chip a couple of easier easier yeah. scores, especially when you get to Crow Park. If those easy scores are but, taken all the time, you'll rack up 20 points. Yeah, yeah. that's a very good point. Uh, just on Murphy as well, I don't know if either of you felt this, but he reminds me a bit of Kev McMiniman in the manner in which he moves and the shift to the shoulder and the kind of directness that he has. Like the, the points that he got cutting in, one off, he's cutting in on the right-hand side and he puts it over to his left. And then moments later, he does the exact same move, plays a one-two and puts it over to his right. Maybe that's the type of player, James, that you're looking mm. for. Maybe this is the type of player that can be a starter for them when it comes what? to championship. And mix it up. 150 oh, yeah. million percent. He's nailed on. He is, <laughs> he is definitely going to start. 50 million percent. Yeah, I like that. It's his, do you know what it is? It's his, um, his power in the change of direction. His power in the turn. That when he got it with a hand pass, he's a very, a very aggressive push off where he suddenly buys himself. A couple of yards to, to yeah, pull the trigger. Yeah, his agility, yeah, yeah his agility I think his power. He's yeah, handfully. so you got some players who get who get loads of ball inside there, and next thing they get it, but it takes them two or three steps to even realize where they are. He's getting it, and he's exploding out of the pass already for a shot. It's it, he, no, he's yeah, he's going to be he's going to be excellent. Paddy, we, we don't belong left here, but one of our other shouts for footballer of the week was another fella in the Calvin Denny oh, goal game. Oh, she Gallon. Yeah, mm. definitely. I know you stole my for him last week with players to watch or in week one um, yeah, a low sure. enough score a game for, for him to skip, kick six points again in tough tough conditions up there but he's he's a player we said Dudley Gall are going to have to rely on to take some of that burden off Paddy McBrearty and we know he's the talent and it's just the case we're disappointed not to say him in week one against Cork like, but he just looks so sharp sure. though yeah that's he's put, put his it, it, Dudley Gall have had a great start but because to get to him became a cup final to Obviously, a lot of change over their squad, but to get two from two, I didn't back them to get promoted. Remember, I, I, I felt they'd be short in you know, Division 2, but it's a brilliant start. But if they are going to do anything, it's the likes Oshie Gallon needs to kind of step up and be really one of the main players for them. And I thought over the weekend he was exceptional because we, we know he has the talent, but it's consistently seen it now over the next four or five weeks. Uh, he's, he's, he will be such an important player for Donegal. James, I can't remember who said it, but I saw someone describe his, his move as a stutter step. Where he comes out to collect the ball, Gallon slows down for a split second. The defender mm. is on his heels and he bursts by him. You can kind of see that there at the weekend. Yeah. Once the defender gets too tight, if you are if you are adept at taking fellas on and you can move your feet fast enough, like you can get around, especially he's playing in the in the centre, he's marking full backs who maybe aren't as agile as we said as yeah. as the corners. Like if you can just kind of buy that step, get your body in front. When I was taking on fellas, I used to always try and get into their into their hands, because if the best defenders, if you ever look at them, they're tackling you with their with their body, with their chest, because you can't go around that. But as soon as a fella sticks out an arm, you can bat that away, or he'll pull you, or he'll foul you in some way. Yeah, 
So he, he would always see him when he's going past the fella, he's always just out of reach of the of the chest. And next thing, this fella's pawing at him. And it's, you're yeah. past him. It's job done. Impressive stuff. And then final shout, like Shawnee O'Shea, I know he's shooting the lights out. I know Bo Clifford has returned off the bench Charlie for Shea. Jack O'Connor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's looking good. I think we'll be talking plenty about him as the year goes on. But a fella who impressed me without doing a huge amount last week, oh. and it's a fella James has spoken about. It's just, I think he's got the build and the physique and the power to play inter-county football straight away yeah. and make an impact. Same way we're saying Cormac Murphy could. And it's Killian Burke and he got his first carry goal at the weekend. Mm. James, like, can he retain his place for the summer? Because it feels like Kerry needs somebody like Killian Burke to step up. It does. And look, we don't want to put too much pressure on, on a young Kerry no, forward. You, either, don't, like, you he's don't want coming, to put too much pressure on him. <laughs> the the whole the pressure, world knows actually. Kerry needed 10 or 12. They need a half forward. Um, and I suppose... Killian played with the 20s last year, had a great year at midfield. Usually that's a bit young to go straight into a senior team, but he had a great club mm-hmm. championship, had a great senior county championship, and he was playing, I suppose, full forward slash centre forward, kind of coming out, getting on loads of ball, playing a big role in his teams, showing great leadership in those. You could tell he had a bit of personality, he had a bit about him. And um, yeah. the way he takes on men, you, you just think, I think this fellow might be ready for it. So Jack's thrown him in at, at 12. I know that Jack kind of does that as well with fellas. No matter where you're going to end up, he'll kind of give you a spell on the wing because you pick up a lot of ball there and you kind of work your way into the side, do you know? Yeah. Yeah, I remember he was saying to me a few times, you know, if you're going through maybe not your best patch, I'll play you 12 or 10 and you kind of you get your way back into it. So he's doing that with killing. Where he's going to end up, I don't know. Could be there. He could be a brilliant half forward. But what he is is very powerful runner, direct Great hands, good in the air, knows how to to take a score. But what I liked the last day about him was he did the simple thing very, very well. He got it, he gave it, he moved again. That's all you want. You know, you want the young fella to come in, just do the simple things well, not try and be a legend, you know, from the start, just do the right thing. And took his goal well, worked hard for the team, you know, hopefully a big, big year for him. Yeah, yeah, impressive stuff from Killian Burke. Um and I would say we're going to have to decide on it, our, our footballer of the week. I oh, think well, we've, well, you've backed Jimmy in every 50 50 you've gone with Jimmy this year. So, Well, who picked Cormac Murphy? Jimmy. Was that a, was that I not suppose collected? we all did, we? Yeah. I, was I think Cormac Murphy is the standout this week. Yeah, I think Cormac Murphy is the standout player as well. Jeez. Yeah, so I think Cormac Murphy is the <laughs> that one. Paddy, maybe next time. Um, okay, so the plan <laughs> for the next week. We're back on Thursday. There's no inter county football next weekend, so there'll be no football pod oh. on Monday. But. You're more than welcome to tune in on Thursday on our members pod. Check out offtheball.com for us. Join to, to figure out how to do that. Or you can just download the Off The Ball app um, where you can get all the Off The Ball podcasts and you get three free podcasts per month. So thanks very much for tuning in this week. It's been great to be back with Paddy and James. Lads, thanks a million. Thanks, Tom. Good to see you, boys. Happy bank holiday. And to everyone at home, enjoy the bank holiday and I suppose the rest of the week. And we'll talk to you on Thursday.